For those that don't know me, I'm Irene. I'm one of the managing partners for the Orlando office. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, I started real estate about four years ago. Um, prior to this, I had a few Metro PCS stores. Um, and the reason I got into real estate was um, the person that owned one of my uh, lo what, well, one of my locations was at the property, the commercial property, they were selling it. So of course that was super important to me because I wasn't sure what the future of my store was and so forth. So I um, tried to find out how to acquire the property, which I learned commercial loans are definitely harder than uh, personal loans just to buy a house. So I had pro personal property before, but this was definitely a little bit more difficult, but he ends up being a wholesaler, um, investor, fix and flipper, um, and kind of like introduced a few things with that industry. Um, and he was able to get me a loan for the property. Um, so I was able to purchase that property um, with a um, with a loan. Um, he introduced me with people that do private lending. Um, mind you, I still speak to all the people today. Um, great guy. And, um, and then I decided to get my real estate license. So, um, and here we are today. Um, but with that being said, investment always called my attention. Um, there's just so much out there that us as agents have access to. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a lucrative industry where you could probably make good money um, doing this. I know you can make good money doing this actually. Um, so, so yeah, so so basically what I wanted to just kind of touch base with you guys, um, let's see. I did a PowerPoint, so I wanna share a PowerPoint with you guys. Let's see. I'm going to share the screen here. Okay. So, a few things, a few things, uh, like, are any of you into um, buying and selling whole, um, properties, fixing and flipping at the moment? Yes. Besides Mr. Omi? <laughs> I want to get started in it. You want to get started. Okay, cool. Just wasn't sure if there was anybody else that was um, in it at the moment. Um, okay, so a few things to know. So when you do get started, know your area. You know, uh, knowledge is key. Uh, everything is is what you know, right? Um, know your area. Know everything about your area. Um, maybe in your area, depending where where you live or a specific area you're trying to target, know everything that you need to know about that neighborhood um, because you're going to want to know what's selling, what's not selling. Um, you know, you're going to try to run your comps. Um, use RPR. I use, you know, I use it all the time because it gives me a nice evaluation as to what the properties are going for in that area, what they're being bought for, what they're being sold for, what, look at pictures, you know, look at everything that you need to look at. Um, you have an idea of where you stand there. Um, constantly look in the MLS because a lot of people think you can only do a fix and flip with homes that you're getting wholesaled or off market. But I myself have purchased properties on the MLS that I've been able to negotiate um, and gone for a very good price and there's still money to be made out there. Um, so if you want to target a specific area, I definitely think that you should set yourself up for, a, you know, constant emails in that area and price ranges, you know, so you know what's going on in that neighborhood. And the minute something comes on, you know, that you see that's under a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars, the houses normally are 600 and you see something come up for 500, jump on it, check it out, see what's, see, see what's, what's going on with it. Because if it's selling for 500, a hundred under, it's a pretty good chance you can negotiate, um, under that 500. Um, so sign up for the emails, um, sign up for the, also the auto emails from wholesalers. There's a lot of wholesalers out there. They'll send you morning emails every morning or all day long. Um, they, they'll send you everything they have, West Palm beach, upstate Florida, central Florida, um, 
down south, they just, they're wholesalers. So they're trying to get, but you need to act fast when it comes to those things, you know? So if you, you know, let's say you've been farming a specific area and you say, oh my God, I know that area. I know the houses there are going for 800. They're selling this house for 500. You know, that's, there's $300,000 difference there. You know, you, 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 you want to jump on something like that and get the most information. Now you're new, but it doesn't matter. Just ask, ask all the questions in the world. Um, asking, you know, nothing's going to happen. For, there's no cost in asking. So just ask and people will be, you know, they'll tell you, they'll tell you exactly what is needed in the house. They'll tell you what the rehab is. Um, most of those properties are, you know, off scene properties that you just, you have to grab them right there and then. So you do need investors, um, people, hard money lenders, people, hard money lenders that will lend you this money. Now, when they see the potentials, of what you know they'll, you'll have to show them the property obviously they'll want to go to the property some want it some will have an appraisal done some will not um it all depends who you're using um but in the long run if the money is there the lender will lend you the money you know um let me see what else we have here lenders so the lenders will normally ask for a 20 percent OK, so if you want to get into this business, you do have to have some cash in hand. OK, um, the cash that you're going to use is and sometimes they'll don't finance the, re, the, 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 the rebuild or the remodel, you know, but you need to have at least 20 percent. So let's say the house is going for 450 and they'll lend and the reno is 50. They'll lend you 500, you know, um, but you have to come in with that. I mean, I'm sorry. They'll, you have to come in with the 20% and then they'll lend you the rental cost of the 50,000. So you definitely need that 20%. Um, but us as realtors, you know, when you close one of these deals and, you know, you have a significant amount of cash on hand, you can, you know, try to negotiate with, with the lenders and maybe even 18%. It, it all depends. Just you need to definitely have some cash in hand. Um all the details that you need to take into consideration are you have your closing costs. Um, they're not as high as a regular closing cost when you're dealing with a bank. Um, obviously, with a private lender, there's there's a lot less closing costs, but they are. There's carrying costs. So if it takes you three months to rehab this property and you're paying $2,000 every month to the lender in interest, you know, you need to take into consideration there's going to be an extra $6,000 at the end of your project. Um, your builder's insurance policy, you always, the lender's probably going to always require that. But let's say, for instance, you have $400,000 one day that you want to invest into a property. I still recommend you get that builder's insurance policy, protects you, anything that happens in the property, anybody can fall, well, you know, it, you're building. So anybody can, a lot of things can happen when you're under construction. Um, you need to take your utilities into consideration. You have to have water and electricity running at the locations um your renovation cost which is super important and this is the make it or break it you know part of it um you need to have the right crew you're you know like i put on there your uncle joe might not cut it you know um uh, maybe you know to, for a few little things here and there but you need to know have an experienced crew somebody that knows what they're doing um and that's giving you the right price for that renovation because if your renovation cost goes out the window, then you're you're not you're not your profit, you know, is it's eating up at your profit. So you need to make sure the right crew is there. You need to be on top of it daily, hourly in the beginning, um, you know, and, and just make sure that you have all the renovation costs. Um very accurate, uh, because again, that could that could hurt you at the end. Um, so, and then details when you sell, you have to think of the realtor commission also as well, your realtor commission, when you're selling the property, your closing costs, when you sell the property and I can't reiterate, run your numbers. Um, I personally use Excel. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a hundred different programs. I run Excel, every Home Depot run, every floor and decor run, every roofer, contractor, bathroom, faucet. Anything that you could possibly think of, I run through that Excel sheet. 
Um, I put everything on a credit card and I put everything down on my Excel sheet. Um, on that Excel sheet can itemize everything as to what I'm spending. Because if I put myself a $50,000 budget and I'm, you know, already in 40, um, we're, we're in bad shape, you know? So you gotta, and, and make sure you get these contractors and the supplies that you need at good prices. So that's always key because you can't just go to anywhere and buy a bathroom vanity that costs a thousand dollars when you could probably get it at a wholesaler somewhere else for 500. Now, you know, 500 here, five, 400 here eats away at your renovation costs. So just make sure that the stuff that you're putting into the home is also valid depending on the, na the neighborhood. Um, there's some neighborhoods that you can just paint, kitchen, quick kitchen, quick bathroom, and you're on your way, go. But there's some neighborhoods that if you take on, they're gonna expect a little bit more detail, a little bit more detail into what you're putting into that property. Um, you can't take a property in South Miami and you know put something cheap in it because you're gonna get, you're not gonna get any offers. So, um, so you have to take that into consideration as to where you're you're purchasing, where you're flipping these homes. So that's another reason of know your area, know everything in your area, know what just sold. I'm sure there's other investors that have flipped in the area as well. So look at their befores and afters so that you can kind of compare to see what they've done. Oh, I see that they only did this, or I see that they knocked down this wall and so forth. So the more you do, the more cost there is. So, but if there's value and you're doing those renovations, then go for it. Um, create a portfolio. Um, a portfolio is going to keep you organized in all the renovations that you've done. This is just an example of like, let's say what I have here. Um, lenders look for this. Um, I send them whenever I need a loan, I can send anybody my Google drive and they'll see my before, my after pictures, my Excel sheets, my costs, um, you know, everything, everything that has to do with that file. I keep it all on this drive. So you see everything that has to do with everything and they'll, you know, the lenders will see that and they'll say, okay, well, she's experienced. She knows what she's doing. She's organized. We'll lend her the money, you know? Um, so, and for yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's important to keep yourself organized in these kind of things. And if you're working on more than one project, then obviously you need to keep yourself organized. Um, this is another, you know, example basically of the organization of, of the Excel sheet. You know, you put your, your total closing costs when you closed, any carrying costs, any utilities fees, um, anything that has to do, whether they cut the grass, you know what I mean? All of that, you're paying for all of that. So just, you you got to put everything in there so that you know what you're really walking away with. Um, and, and then to know for next time, because there's mistakes that you make along the line as well. So there's a lot of times then you say, I'm not going to do, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, and, and you overdo it. So don't overdo it, but you learn from, from doing that and then calculating. And when you start calculating, that's when you see, oh my God, I've eaten away at my profit. <laughs> um, so you have to be very careful when it comes to those things. Um, okay. I want to open for questions. I want questions from you guys. Let me exit this now. There. Any questions? Great presentation. Great presentation, Irene. Great stuff. Everything you went over, you made it very simple. Because I I know like being in the business as well too. Like everything you talked about was actually like key and, and key stuff to keep in mind. So um right. thank you. It was it was and you made it very organized, like how you said. That was that was really easy. I think organization is the key to doing it and you you know, you go learning as, as you go doing this, you know, you go learning and you kind of just figure it out as you go. Um, just like when you become a realtor, there's no real book. It's you learning through experience. So as you move forward and every one transaction is not the same. So, you know, there's, I can't say this is the golden ticket and this is the, the secret. It's, it's, it's a learning experience and you just have to go through it in order to do it. But um, here at Lifestyle, we do have a lot of leaders that are that do investment and fix and flips and and so forth. So you guys have the tools to ask these questions. You guys, Leo is a flipper. Omi's doing this as well. Sherry is great at doing it as well. 
Um, I'm also available if you ever want to text me or call me with any questions. We can introduce you to lenders. Um, so you have you have the tools. Just got to, you know, put it together and make sure that this is something that you want to do. It is exhausting sometimes. It's frustrating if you have a construction crew that's not doesn't show up and you have a timeline and you have another mortgage payment that you have to make. Um, so it could be frustrating. It's not all glamorous. It's just, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Um, and again, I'm here for a one-on-one -on -one if you ever want to go more in depth to it and, um, or you have any questions. I have a question. Yes. Um, if, if I currently don't have like funds to get started, is there a way to get started through investors? There is. There's some investors that might lend you the whole um the whole amount and maybe maybe a small uh down payment, um, which is called there uh, instead of a hard money loan, there's soft money loans. Um, and it's not the same as a regular loan, a, a, you know, regular personal uh home loan. Um, there is a company that I work with that might be able to help you out with that. If you like, you can text me or and I can send you the information. But yeah, there are some lenders that will do that. Now they'll go based on your credit because now they don't have anything to go for, you know. Um, so it'll have definitely have to be with um, probably out, some kind of outstanding credit. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I mean, you have a question in the chat. I'll read it for you. Um, it says, how would you know which property is the one? Is there something specifically you're looking for? And do you also recommend a specific commercial lender? So commercial lender. Those are hard. I do have a few that I work with. Um, the commercial lending that I got was actually through a hard money loan. And then we ended up getting, you know, regular, um, con you know, regular loan. So I can send you the, con the conventional lender. And as far as the property is concerned, how do you know the right property? That's what I mean by know the area. I have an area, it's called Darlington Manor. You know, I know the houses there go over a million dollars. So if something, I see something in my radar that comes up at 800, I know there's money to be made there. Now, if the house, if you walk into the house and it has a new roof, it has impact windows, but it's all full of junk. Hey, forget the junk. The, the bones are there, you know, um, try to get an inspection too. You know, you can always ask for inspections. And if you're getting them off of the MLS, you definitely go the same route as you do as a regular purchase and you're collecting commission because they're normally paying commission on that. So, um, so as far as picking the right house, you just, you have to do your homework. You, you definitely have to do your homework and just, um, make sure that it's the right choice. If sometimes they'll let you bring in the contractor, if you have somebody, you know, that can come in and take a look at the property, give you an estimate of repairs. You got another question. Um, what is your phone number in order to ask you the hard money info? Yes. Let me seven eight or I I can even know. Sorry guys, I don't use Zoom a lot. Um, let me see. Here we are. He's jumping in the chat. There. Text me um, your information um, and, and then I'll go ahead and give you a quick call and we can talk about it. But yeah, I mean, if you guys, like I said, you know, we have lenders. I, I currently just started using Leo's lender. You know, I just used him for a, 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 a loan. So, you know, there's definitely, you want to always ask questions, meet people, learn. Um, you don't want to burn any bridges. Um, this industry, everybody knows everybody. So, um, you want to make sure that everybody is happy with everything and, uh, and keep good relations with everyone. I have a question. Thank you for the presentation. Um, what yeah. does it take to be, what does it take to be, uh, an owner developer? An owner of what? Developer. Like developer? if you want to invest... If you want to invest, like building uh, homes or other properties. Um... Mm, that's a tough question. I do not work with uh, or as a developer, so I, I wouldn't know. But that would definitely, I know, would take a lot of money. <laughs> um, you need a contractor. You need engineering. You need property. I mean, that's 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 big time right there as far as developing is concerned. 
that's a, that's a little more complicated than just a fix and flip. But if you want to start somewhere, let's say that you, you, you may not start as a big, uh, you know, a big, uh, on the program, but how can you start, um, you know, investing in the business? What is the best way to start? Like buying triplex, duplex? Yeah, or I would what? say buying, buying investment properties, you know, buying investment properties. And in the long run, if you always want to develop on that property, that commercial property that I purchased, by the way, in, uh, in Broward, it, um, it's, it's a rundown building, super rundown. And, um, I sold the Metro PCS store to somebody else. So they're still running the store there. I just collect rent from them. But eventually I would like to develop on it, you know, like apartment buildings, apartment buildings just came into the neighborhood. So I would have to contact a contractor and kind of get involved in that and just learn that whole aspect of, of doing that. But as long as you're acquiring and you have properties as far as duplex, triplex, I mean, sometimes you can get those that are run down and you can just do a few minor repairs and um, rent those out. And that's, equity and it's paying itself and equity that you're gaining on that property. So um, if you can get your hands on something like that and then develop on that property later, that's key right there. Getting the property for a good price, the actual piece of land and then developing after. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yes, thank you. Any other questions that you guys might have? How can we get connected to to uh, builders or owner developers so we can learn more about it? Um, you can probably just reach local developers. I mean, I can I have a few you know people that I know that are developers. Um, but you can just reach them out, reach out to them, and just kind of touch base with them, you know, sit down and have a conversation with them and let them know your interests and they can give you some kind of quotes and guide you as to what steps you need to take in order. Cause there's a lot of permitting uh, involved and zoning. So um, they're the ones that are going to be, you know, able to answer those questions. Yeah, I mean, um, I tried to contact some developers here in Orlando, but so far I haven't had any. I haven't have any answers from them. No. So, um, if you can like provide some real contact number or, yeah, email. send me a text. S send me a text message. I put my name, my my phone number on there. Send me a text message. What is your okay. name? Mary, Judy. Mary, okay. Send me your, send me a text message and I can, I, I mean, I'll send you who I know. Okay. Um, anyone else have any questions or anything that I can touch base on that you might, might be interested in? Okay. Well, I hope that you, I, I answered your question. I, um, if you guys have any questions at all, like I said, my number is on the chat. If you guys want to reach me directly, um, just reach me directly. I'm here. I have a quick question. Sorry. Yep. All right. So as a new realtor, um, how would you recommend or is it recommended maybe a good idea to be in touch with other wholesalers um to have like just knowledge of what inventory they have absolutely um, is that like a common practice like that wholesalers have like preferred realtors that they kind of share their their projects with or is that not like a common practice okay so when you're doing wholesaling um remember they're wholesaling these deals there's no it's not like the mls that says a commission is structures there if you as a realtor have a wholesale deal that's coming to you and you want to try to sell it off. Is that what you're asking? Well, on both scenarios. So if I had a wholesale deal and I wanted to sell it off right that I can see how you would do that. But if I wanted to know what another realtor's inventory is, what they're working on, like if I have a buyer 
or I have a lot of buyers. Remember, wholesalers I... are only going to accept cash or hard money loan. Mm, so it, okay. Yeah. So a wholesale, okay. a wholesaler is only going to take cash. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's no inspection. So if it's like a first time home buyer, I do not recommend unless they're a contractor and they know what they're doing. Um, right. And, and if you just, did have in the example that if you did have a buyer that was ca a cash buyer, and I wanted to know, for example, what are you working on? Maybe the person that I have interest with, uh, you know, has cash and they have three fifty, and maybe you have something that's three fifty. Oh yeah, absolutely. That you're working on. Yeah, so I mean, be connected. Knowledge is power. So you know, just as uh, have all the right tools in in hand because. Let's say, for instance, we're working with someone that has 350 in hand and they you have a wholesaler that has a property for 350 in hand. And you can just at that point, remember, wholesalers, you have to negotiate your commission. Um, you have to tackle that on um, when you go put that when you do that transaction. So just just a reminder. So you'll definitely have to tackle that on. So like if there's 350, you know, um, that's 350. They're going to accept 350. They're not paying you any commission. So you want to try to sell it maybe 355 or, you know, 316 so that that way you can make something on top of that. Because it is off market. It's yeah. selling, and that's, that's kind of how that, that works. But I mean, if you have a buyer, like I said, it's everything's negotiable. <laughs> so. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a great afternoon. And like I said, if you have any questions at all or anything, just um, just shoot me a text and I'll be sure to get back to you.